Okay, it's not that programming the ability to grab and climb onto walls ended up being super difficult, but I really had no idea how to do it, and I'd been puzzling it over for the last week. In just the last two days, I've made an enormous amount of progress, and I managed to engineer the solution pretty much by myself, so overall it was very instructive. Here's my methodology. I have absolutely no idea if any of this is the simplest solution or even good practice at all. I could already jump like this last time. Ironically, this kind of jump has almost no purpose in the original Prince of Persia other than to check the floor for loose tiles during your landing. What little I've done so far has already massively made me appreciate how it integrated all the movement types were. Still, almost immediately after my last video, I turned off this jump entirely. The climb is three separate pieces. First, to jump up and grab the lip of the wall, which is an animation with no input. Second, to choose to either hang, release, or climb, based on the player's input. Third, the character pulls himself over the wall, again entirely an animation with no player input. I added the animations into the game and the basic state machine to switch through them. It was simple enough to add a jump that ended in a hang, and a hanging state that was indefinite, as long as I held down the key. I realized I also had to add in an animation for dropping down from the ledge hold, and that was nothing new either. Here's my animation for the full climb. My sprite is massively larger when climbing than it is normally, about double the size in both dimensions, although most of it is transparent. Note the object doesn't move at all during the long animation, so once it ends, I'm just standing in the same spot where my hanging animation had been happening. This means my actual player object is still grounded for the whole thing, which will probably give me some problems somewhere down the line when it comes to climbing to avoid enemies who will react to and attack the spot way below me. I'll probably just make the character invincible and undetectable after a certain frame of the animation. For what it's worth, in Mario 64, when Mario is hanging on an edge, the real object is invisible and just standing near the edge, while the game plays an animation of an intangible Mario hanging off of it. I did this next to walls, and ended up just playing hot and cold to find the exact pixels to move once the animation ended, and made a command that I move those pixels all at once on the frame I returned to my standing animation. This all ended up working rather nicely. Now, I wanted the game to be able to differentiate between when to do the regular jump and when to do the wall climb, so I made a simple debug command. When hitting up, I generate two small red floating objects. I position them so one would check for a wall near me, while one would check for some empty space above it. I moved these around until I was happy with them, and this is my final result. So here, I've got the free space on top but no wall in front, I'll do a regular jump. But here, I've got the wall and the space, so I'll do the climb. I still haven't quite perfected it. I want to move forward during the jump until I hit the wall, which sounds simple enough, but I need to mess with it a lot due to my jump's collision box. Right now if I jump from really far out, but still in climbing range, I'll just climb up on nothing and then fall. Remember, Prince of Persia teleported the prince to the ideal location before the jump even started, so once I solve this I'll have made a more advanced wall climb than the one in that game. This is my first chance to actually improve on the engine, so I'm excited. The drop-down animation was simple enough, it's just my climbing animation in reverse. But again, I used my red spots to check the locations I was messing with. You can see they're a bit more close to me now since I want the climbing down to be more exact, and both spaces need to be free. So I could approach edges easily, I edited my small step command so that it would stop moving once I got to an edge. This ended up being a bit harder than it looked. Basically, if a spot just below and in front of me was empty, it would set my horizontal speed to zero. You can see the programming easily here with my spot check. So here are the fruits of my labor. There are already a few subtleties I've programmed in. Hanging onto a ledge without holding the hanging button activates a 5 frame countdown. You'll still drop down very quickly if you're not holding anything. But there shouldn't be any conflicts about holding up and never touching the hanging key at all, since not holding the hanging key is the condition for dropping. A standing forward jump is up and forward together. The earliest frames of starting to run and starting to jump up can be cancelled to forward jump, in case one of your keystrokes is slightly delayed. I made this work on the same principles as Akara in fighting games, though it's much more relaxed since most of my actions right now are animating at 15 FPS. I've got a lot of things related to this I still need to add. For example, these walls are two bricks high. I'd like if the player did a running jump into a wall, they'd be able to jump up and grab onto the ledge of a wall that's three bricks high, or more quickly scale it if it's only two. 
This is a movement command that's not in the original Prince of Persia, so I'll have to make my own placeholder animations that will probably be stick figures. I'd also like to be able to climb down a wall even if you're facing down it, and for the animation to involve a mid-fall pivot. To be even faster, running and sliding off an edge while holding the hanging key will do an even quicker fall and pivot. My ambition for the platforming of this game is that you never have to slow down if you know exactly where you're going and your inputs are good. This is my first time working with different platform levels, so I haven't coded in a lot of things related to that yet. Once I make a falling state and conditions on when to enter it, a lot of things should suddenly fit into place very quickly. So I expect the next update video will be crouching, falling distances, and maybe a very simple health bar.